Hi and welcome to part two of the Calculus One video on related rates. I have three examples for you in this video where we will model what related rates will look like and how you identify what you are trying to find as well as what you are given. And we will draw a model for almost all of these moving forward. So number four says a fish is reeled in at a rate of one foot per second from a point ten feet above the water. At what rate is the angle between the line and the water changing when there's a total of 25 feet of line out? So the first thing I would encourage you to do is draw the situation. Okay, so here's my amazing artistry here. So first of all, we are reeling in this fish. And so this fish, this orange fish that we caught right here is being reeled in. So my hypotenuse of this right triangle is actually going to be getting smaller or that side length will be decreasing at a rate of one foot per second, which means its rate should be negative. So if I label my sides X for the horizontal, Y for the vertical, Z for the hypotenuse, I could then say DZ DT is negative one feet per second. And then I know that I am 10 feet above the water at all times. That is not changing. Okay, and then at what rate is the angle between the line and the water? And I did try to draw the water blue there on the bottom. So that is this angle theta right there. So at what rate is the angle between the line and the water changing? So we are trying to find d theta dt, and we need to think if d theta dt is going to be getting bigger or getting smaller. If it is getting bigger, it will have a positive rate of change. If it's getting smaller, it will have a negative rate of change. And because it just says changing in the problem, it doesn't clue us into whether it's increasing or decreasing, we would need to make sure that we either use the word increasing or decreasing or the positive and negative to go with our answer. If my line is coming in, that means the fish is now perhaps right here, and my theta is bigger than it was. So hopefully you can see that. If not, you can kind of give yourself a couple redrawings. So this should be getting bigger. And what would the label be? Well, theta will be radians per time, right, was in seconds. So this will be so many radians per second. Then it says when there is a total of 25 feet of line out, so that's when z is 25. Now, z is changing. Remember, dz dt, there is a rate of change. So I cannot put in 25 into an original equation. That has to be an after the derivative value. The only numbers that I can use before I do the derivative are values that are constant, that no matter what, as this triangle is changing, getting bigger or smaller, that side length would not change. Okay, so let me show you what I mean here. So I have to have a way of relating theta and side lengths. Now certainly we can use Pythagorean theorem to find x, right, because we can say x squared plus 10 squared equals 25 squared, so that's 625 minus 100, and I'll put it in a positive way, so I'm just going to say square root of 525. I know it's plus or minus, but it is a side length, and again that's feet as well. Okay, so I do have all three sides, right, however the only one that is staying the same because when I'm, you know, three seconds in, remember my line is now different, so my x value is going to be smaller and my z value is going to be smaller as well. So I don't want to use those, but I need to write an equation that's going to relate theta to these side lengths. So I would use the side that is constant and then the other side that you know it is changing and you know its rate of change. If you use x in your setup, you're going to run into a trouble because you don't know the rate at which x is changing. So I'm going to use opposite and hypotenuse. So I'm going to use sine theta. The opposite side is always 10, so I can put that in there. The hypotenuse, though, I'm going to leave as z because that is changing, so I don't want to put 25 in there yet. 
So I'm going to rewrite this and say that sine of theta is 10z to the negative 1, because I just think that's an easier derivative to do. So the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta d theta dt, don't forget your d theta dt, equals negative 10z to the negative 2, and don't forget your dz dt. I'll rewrite this to make this look a little bit nicer here. So cosine theta d theta dt, which is what we're solving for, equals negative 10 over z squared, right, that's what z to the negative 2 is, times dz dt. Now that you have taken the derivative, I can fill in my values now. So even side lengths that change can go in after you have done the derivative. So cosine theta, hmm, do we know what cosine theta is? Sure you do. Look at your triangle, right? That's why we draw these. Cosine of theta would be the adjacent, which is square root of 525, over the hypotenuse, 25. I'm solving for d theta dt, negative 10 over z squared, so it would be 25 squared, times dz dt, which we knew to be negative 1. So we'll go up here. I'm going to multiply both sides by 25 over this square root. So times 25 over the square root of 525. So d theta dt in exact form is going to be positive, because negative times a negative, 10 times 25 over 25 squared times the square root of 525. There was a reason I didn't multiply that, that out. Did you see it? Because those will divide. So one of the factors of 25 is gone. And then 10 over 25 will reduce. So I can take a 5 out of each, or divide 5 divided by 5. So 2 over 5 square root of 525. I know the square root of 525 can, you know, be broken down a little bit more, but depending on how you're asked to answer this will depend on whether you need exact or not. So let's get a nice rounded value here um, just in case. So I'm going to say it's approximately 0 0.017. I do highly encourage you to practice putting this in in your calculator because oftentimes we get the wrong number because your calculator will divide by 5 and then multiply. And that's not what you mean. You also want to divide by the square root of 525. So it's approximately 0.017, and we said this was going to be radians per second, and it is increasing, right? Because we got a positive value, and that's what we said. So we said the rate of change of the angle from the beginning, we made that statement, that it should be positive, and in fact, I got a positive value. Okay, let's look at a tank here. So a water tank has the shape of an inverted circular cone with base radius 2 meters and height 4 meters. If water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of 2 cubic meters per minute, find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is 3 meters deep. So we're going to draw a picture. Okay, base radius 2 meters and the height is 4 meters. This is the size of my cone that is not changing. Now water is being pumped into the tank. So at one time, I might have this much water, right? But if water is being pumped in, you know, a few minutes later, I might have this much water, okay? So water is being pumped into the tank. So what I do know is that if water is being pumped into the tank, then this 2 cubic meters per minute is a positive value. Now, they don't necessarily have to put the positive or negative in front of that. So it's positive because we are pumping it into the tank. The tank is not draining out. And what is this? This is dv dt. How can we tell? Well, one way that I can tell is because it's cubic meters, right? And if it's cubic meters, then that means it has something to do with three dimensions, which is volume. But that's how much water is coming into the tank how much water would be volume. 
Now the two meters and the four meters though talks about the overall size and or shape of this cone, right? So it's an inverted circular cone and this gives me the ratio between the radius and the height. So I can say something like radius to height equals two to four. They're both meters so I don't necessarily have to write down meters. This gives me the relationship 4R equals 2H that I'm going to hold on to because again I'm pretty sure I'm going to have too many variables here and so I'm going to have to make a substitution. But I don't know yet if I want to keep R for radius or if I want to keep H for height so I'll have to keep reading here. It says find the rate at which the water level is rising. So that is dH dt. That's what I'm trying to find, so I'll put a question mark next to that. And it is rising, so I will give myself a note that that should be positive, right? Getting larger or increasing. And this should be the label for height would be meters, and the label for my time would be minutes, because everything else is in meters and minutes. And then the last piece of information that it tells me is when the water is three meters deep. So that means H is three meters. Okay, do you notice I have no information about R? I wasn't asked about R, I'm not given R, so I don't want any R's in my problem. So I'm gonna take this relationship equation and solve it for R. So I'm gonna divide both sides by four. And so every R in my volume equation in a second here is going to be replaced with one half h. So I start with the volume equation, one third pi r squared h. And then from there I'm going to, before you differentiate, before you get to your calculus, substitute in your variable. So volume is one third pi or pi over three if that's easier to write. r squared, again I don't want r's because I don't know anything about them. So I'm going to replace that with that relationship, right, of one half h, quantity squared, times h. So now this is going to be, I can square the one half, so that makes a fourth. So this is going to be pi over 12, h squared times h, so that'll be h to the third. Now I'm ready to do the derivative. Now I have one variable in, one variable out, so I can say dv dt, remember your diff differentiating with respect to time. So I'll bring down the 3. So 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4. h squared, and don't forget your dh dt. The derivative itself should not be the trickiest part of the problem. I will fill in my given information and I should be able to find the missing. So I know dv dt is positive 2. I know h was 3 and I'm solving for dh dt. So I have 2 equals 9 pi over 4 times dh dt. And I am going to show this because again on our calculator this is a very commonly missed problem because of one part. So I'm going to multiply this side by 4 over 9 pi. So this is 8 over 9 pi which if we had to leave it exact most of us would get this correct. When we put it in our calculator, if you just type in eight divided by nine pi, it's doing eight divided by nine and taking that answer and multiplying by pi, and that is not what you mean. So if that's the case, then you need to put eight divided by, and in parentheses, nine pi. But you should get approximately 0.283 if you needed to round to three decimals. And I'm going to make sure I label this. The water level is rising at about 0 0.283 and I was in meters per minute. And again, if they said keep it exact, then you're eight over nine pi. Okay, last one is a typical ladder example, which people kind of like. So the top of a ladder is sliding down a vertical wall at a rate of 0 0.15 meters per second. At the moment when the bottom of the ladder is 3 meters from the wall, it slides away from the wall at a rate of 0 0.2 meters per second. How long is the ladder? So let me draw this ladder against a wall. And again, I'm going to label my horizontal x 
my vertical Y, and my ladder Z. Now I'm going to label my side lengths with what's happening. So I read it from the beginning again. The top of a ladder slides down a vertical wall, I draw the arrow, at a rate of 0 0.15 meters per second. That has to be a negative amount. Why? Because side Y, right, this is sliding down this vertical wall, Y, and so Y is getting smaller or decreasing. So dy dt should be negative 0.15 meters per second. Okay, at the moment when the ladder, when the bottom of the ladder is three meters from the wall, so that means X is three meters, it slides away from the wall because as the ladder is sliding down, think about where it would be. In a few seconds here or minutes, it's going to be like that. At, so dx dt is positive, and I am going to label it because then I know that I at least assessed whether it should be positive or negative, 0 0.2 meters per second. And it wants to know how long is the ladder. So I'm trying to find z. All right, well, what's the relationship that's going to relate my variables? That's the part where you have to come up with that equation. Well, I know Pythagorean theorem. This is not talking about an angle at all. You notice it never talked about the angle between the ladder and the wall or the ladder and the ground. It's only talking about the side lengths that you're creating. So I know x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Now, x, y, and z, as this ladder is sliding down the wall, y is getting smaller, x is actually getting larger, what's happening to z? Well, z is your ladder, and on this problem, we are not in one of those fancy collapsible ladders, this is just a static ladder, so it is constant. So we should know two things here. We should know that if it's constant and it doesn't change, its derivative or rate of change. Well, if something doesn't change, what would its rate of change be? And that would be a zero. So I could say, let's just do the derivative now, 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2z dz dt. And then once I go to put in dz dt, I know that that is zero, zero times that whole side becomes zero. The other thing that we can think of is, again, z is some constant number. So if z is a constant number, then I square it, it's still a constant. What is the derivative of any constant? Zero, okay? So either way we get that part to be zero. Let's fill in the rest and see if we can figure it out. Now, some people get here and say, um, this isn't working because I'm supposed to find z. So if I'm supposed to find z and I no longer have a z in this equation, something had to have gone wrong. Nope, just keep going, see what it gives you. So two times x, which we know at this time to be three, and at when x is three, my dx dt is positive 0.2, and at that same time, my y value is unknown, but my dy dt is sliding down at that negative 0.15. So this equation is going to allow me to solve for y. Well look, if I know x and I know y, wouldn't I know z? Pythagorean theorem. So yeah, let's find y. 1.2 minus 0.3y. So 1.2 equals 3 tenths y, divide by 0.3, y is 4. So if y is 4 meters, this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Again, I could do Pythagorean theorem, okay, to solve. So the latter is five meters long. I hope you found these three examples on related rates really helpful, some of which have included, you know, some trigonometry in there, we did a volume, and then we did a ladder sliding down. So there certainly are plenty more examples out there to practice, and I hope you keep practicing, and I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, have a good day.